Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Saturday, April 13, 2024. I pray that the Lord will continue to be with us and may he pour out his spirit upon us today and fill us with his blessing. And may we lift our voice in thanksgiving to him for all that he has done and is still doing on our behalf because the truth is that God has been good to us. And so we have much to give him thanks for. Amen. Now our reading today comes to us from Zechariah chapter 3 and we will read from verse 1 to 4. And it says, And he shew me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a branch plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I say, Amen. We give God thanks this morning for his word of encouragement and, it, and his word of hope. I pray that we are blessed and I pray that the Holy Spirit will encourage us this morning as we go through the reading. So in this chapter, we see where Zechariah in vision get a glimpse of Joshua the high priest standing before the Lord. No, no, Joshua here represents the defendant, which is us. And he's standing before God the Father, the judge. And Satan standing at his right side as his accuser. So it's a judgment scene, a courthouse scene. So God the Father represents the judge. The angel represents Jesus. Joshua represents the people or represents me and you. And then the accuser now is the prosecutor, which is Satan. Do we understand? So in this vision now, we, we see where Joshua is wearing a filthy garment. And this symbolizes sinfulness or the sins of the people. The sin our sins. Now, as I said, Satan is there as the prosecutor to tell God that he cannot forgive us because what? We are sin or we have sin. We have sin and therefore our punishment should be equal to his. So he's there to, to place his argument to say that it is unfair for us to be forgiven when we sin. So that's why he's there. Amen? Do we understand? So he is our accuser. So he's going to bring up everything. He has his portfolio full of all the things that we have done. And the things that we are doing. And he presents them before God and says, See there? This is what Ryan has done. This is what he is doing. And he does not deserve to be forgiven. In fact, he deserved to die because he has broken your sacred commandment and he has not been keeping your word and your holy law. And the reality of the truth is that he would be correct because the Bible says that we are all sinners and shaped in iniquity. And even if you are not a practicing sinner, meaning that you are not practicing to do wrong things, you are still a sinner and you are still sin. Because you were born in sin, which make you automatically a sinner. So whether or not you're practicing, practicing something wrong, you're still guilty. So he has a case against you. But then Jesus stepped in and said, No, no, I have already paid his bail. I pay for his pardon. Therefore, he will not be punished for his sin. Because I have forgiven him. And I say, Amen. I have forgiven him of the wrongs that he, had, he has done. And therefore, 
my blood is sufficient for him. So we so I have been given grace. I have been forgiven of my sin. And that is why he, he says the angel was commanded to what? Take off the filthy garment from Joshua, which is represented as sin, as we said before. And he's given a new garment, which symbolizes God's forgiveness. And I say, Amen. So, what is the point here? The point is that we are in the judgment and we are guilty of sinning against the Lord and his holy law and that punishment is death but the conjunction come in but because of what Christ did for us his sacrifice on the cross we are forgiven of that sin or those sin right the Bible says that in, in John I believe that if we confess our sins, then he is faithful and just to forgive us. So he has now taken on that responsibility of bearing our burden and he has just wiped our slate clean. So it throws Satan's entire case out the window. So he doesn't have a case anymore because the righteousness of Christ has now covered us. We are not walking in our own righteousness, but we are walking now in the righteousness of Christ. Amen? And that is why when we give our heart to Christ, we must change our ways. We can't keep doing the same thing that we were doing before. Now that we have been forgiven. Because if we keep doing it, then it means therefore that we have not accepted his forgiveness and his pardon. And we have refused his grace. Which also means... That we will bear our own burden and our own consequences for sin. So you see how serious the matter is? Remember this is a trial case you know. And a big one at that. High profile case. So it is a matter of life and death. You either will get life or you're going to get the death penalty. There's no other way out. And life here means life eternal. Not life in prison. Okay, I know in the world, when you speak about life, you spend your entire life in prison. But that's not what we are talking about here. I am talking about eternal life or eternal death. Okay, just want to make that clear. So, we have to be serious about what we want. Because the prosecutor is going to make sure that we are punished for the crime than in a manner of speaking and so we need to run to jesus and stay stay with our lawyer so this is why it is important for us to confess our sin because every day satan accuse us or bring our name before god because he knows that we are slipping up and he wants us to be punished for our sin so when you and i don't confess our sin we'll we are going to bear the consequences of that sin because that's why the prosecutor is there to make sure that you are you and i are punished and even if we don't get the punishment now because the little puny punishment that we may get now that's not the real punishment it's about the punishment that we will get at the end of the judgment when the trial is over at the final stand that is what is going to matter so what you and i do know will determine the outcome of our faith so may god help us to confess our sins now may god help us to walk in his righteousness not in our own self-righteousness but to lean on him the messiah who gave his life as a sacrificial gift to save us from our sins may god continue to bless you and keep you in jesus name amen